Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining the session. My name is Ralph Mohammed Rahimov, and I'm excited to be talking about our study entitled Learning Interclass Relations for Intravenous Contrast in CT, a joint work with two of my brilliant colleagues, Amir Barr and Ayelet Axarad Balin at Zebra Medical Vision, where I myself am a machine learning researcher. Now, despite our best efforts, one of the most common challenges we face in medical imaging is a limitation on the size of our data sets particularly in the classification setting. Now, if we're unable to get more labeled data, it's worth considering how we can formulate our tasks to get more out of our data. So clinical findings are often represented categorically, and these are usually the easiest labels to acquire in large amounts, which is why we're often dealing with these classification tasks. But it's often, but it's often important to consider that these clinical categories can represent snapshots or stages into continuous physiological processes. For example, we might be looking at stages of a disease like liver fibrosis. So when we frame this as a standard classification problem, we typically treat these classes as independent of one another, losing information about the relationships that exist between the categories. So in this study, we show that reintroducing these types of categorical relations into our training process actually reduces the amount of data that we need to achieve good performance. We also propose some new approaches that let us implicitly learn these categorical relations from the data itself during training, alleviating the need to set strong assumptions in our network while preserving some of the benefits that come from incorporating these relations into the training process with respect to network performance. And we specifically deal with the task of classifying intravenous contrast enhancement phases in abdominal CT, where after a contrast agent is administered, scans are taken at predefined time points or phases, resulting in distinct but progressive enhancement patterns that are critical in the diagnostic process. So identifying the phase is hugely important for any automated machine learning pipeline in the real world, and we need to do it well and how we view the relationship between these phases can tell us how to model this task, where instead of ignoring the similarities and overlap between phases, we can incorporate the temporal nature of the phases, the time from injection, or even better model the progression of physiological or diagnostic features in the image, incorporating both the relationship between phases and the cyclic nature of the contrast enhancement process. And we start by considering cases where the precise relationship between categories is known or can be assumed. Here, we can frame our task as an ordinal regression problem, aligning ourselves with an approach presented in CVPR in 2019, where we maintain the goal of classification, but represent our circular interclass relations within a soft target distribution, where we assign categories similar to the ground truth under our ordinal assumptions, a higher non-zero probability. So our network will attempt to match a distribution which incorporates the relationships between categories, encouraging it to implicitly learn these relations and prioritize certain mistakes over others. So with that said, it's important to consider how we would extend this framework when we can't reasonably assume the relationship between our classes, if we don't know the ordering of the categories or if the nature of the ordinal relationships is not clear, whether it's in cyclic domain, linear or something else. So when we don't know the exact ordering or just don't want to encode this information based on our own assumptions, we can instead rely on the network to implicitly learn the categor categorical relations from visual features in the data. So we loosen our constraints, and instead of predefining a known ordinal relationship, we specify a set of possible relations in some label domain. In this setting, each ordering in the set defines a separate label mapping from a ground truth to a soft distribution, each of which is evaluated against the network prediction. And by jointly optimizing both the network parameters and a weighted sum of the encoding specific losses, the network can implicitly choose the most natural or easy op to optimize label encoding and categorical ordering. And when we compare these approaches to a one-hot encoding baseline, we see improvements in performance on a range of data set sizes, which is most significant for small data sets. 
And the same is true when we learn these relations between classes in parallel during the training process. So we can finally take this even further, we may, where we may not even know the nature of the relationship between the categories. Um, in these cases, we can relax our constraints even further and directly learn a mapping from each ground truth class to a soft distribution that we jointly optimize as part of the training process. Here, we're actually able to expose relations that could not be represented in the previous approaches, and we're able to improve over one hot encoding baseline with pretty much no assumptions at all. So we think this is a promising avenue for any machine learning application in the medical imaging domain or other classification tasks where we want to give special consideration to the relationship between categories, whether the relationships are known in advance or not. Uh, thank you all for listening. We hope you get a chance to read the paper and I'm looking forward to your questions in the live session. Thank you.